Chief Okemos walked the forest and paddled the waterways of the Midwestern states in Canada over 200 years ago. For one whose name is well known, little accurate information is available. The fact that he died before the Civil War plays a part into the mystery. As an indigenous person, they unfortunately weren't important to many of the white settlers. So what we have is a settler's portrayal of the life of Chief Okemos. In my book, Stories from Williamston's Past, I dedicated a chapter to Chief Okemos and tried to cull through fact and fiction. Chief Okemos and his people lived for many years camped in what is now Okemos and had summer gatherings in Williamston where the Brookshire Golf Course is now located. Pinning down a birth location and computing Chief Okemos's age is as an elusive as a snipe hunt. When he died in December 1858, despite his notoriety, little published words were penned at the time. Biographical tidbits are less than numerous, and what has been published are mostly regurgitated earlier works, for better and for worse. By the time pioneer recollections were being compiled and printed in books and newspapers, the chief had been dead for a couple of generations. It is easy to find three different birth locations in more than a half dozen birth years, so let's go to the chief's own words. Relying on federal government testimony in a land treaty lawsuit, Chief Okemos was approached in 1845 and asked to recount his recollection. I am 76 years old have lived in Michigan 48 years. I knew General Cass well. I was at the Treaty of 1819. I was at that time a chief of a certain band among the Ottawa tribe, a part of the band I was chief over were Chippewas. I signed the treaty as one of the Chippewa chiefs. At the time I signed the treaty, my residence was at a place about six miles above Lansing on the Red Cedar River. I was born in Michigan near Pontiac on an island in a lake. From that time to the time of the treaty, I lived at Okemos City, near Lansing. I was 30 years old when I left the place I was born. Manny Tu Gabawe, my mother's father, and Kabi Konake, my uncle, were my chiefs. The first named chief was a Chippewa Indian, and the last named in Ottawa. There were no connection to each other. I was first a chief when I was 20 years old, and was about 50 at the time of the treaty. So, this narrative supports the birth of 1769 on Apple Island near Orchard Lake. Various sources indicate Chief Okemos was engaged in the series of frontier battles amongst the indigenous tribes and French against the American troops and the British. The Battle of the Wabash on November 4, 1791. Fallen Timbers near Toledo, Ohio, August 20th, 1794. Later, the chief was involved in pushing the Shawnee tribe out of Michigan, fighting near Battle Creek. During the War of 1812, Okemos appeared at the siege of Fort Meigs in 1813 in Perrysburg, Ohio. The Battle of Fort Stevenson, August 2nd, 1813, near the Sandusky River and his final battle at the Battle of the Thames, also called Moravian Town in Ontario, Canada, on October 5, 1813. In his battles against the American soldiers and the British, Chief Okemos sustained a saber wound to his shoulder and back and a cracked skull, which left a lifelong three to four inch impression on the side of his head. There is some dispute as to which battle these serious wounds were sustained, but the Battle of Fort Stevenson ranks high on the probability scale for the saber wound. The chief's appearance was described as stout in stature, stern in appearance, and was between five feet and five feet five inches tall. He may have had four wives and children, John, Jim, Mary, and likely others. When Chief Okemos died near DeWitt, Though that location is also subject to a slight doubt, he was 89 years old, using his treaty testimony, and was buried at an ancestral ground south of Portland, Michigan. So there you have it, a story of one of Michigan's most famous people, Chief Okemos. See you around.